What's up, everybody? It's Prion Joni. So today we're going to talk about the brand new Pioneer DJ VM series active reference monitors. I have the VM 88 inch speaker right here and how it compares to the Bullet series, which over here I have the Pioneer DJ Bullet 8. The VM series replaces the Bullet series and we're going to talk about all the features that are new on the VMs. But first, a word from our sponsor, Direct music service. DMS is an online database for working DJs and mix artists. It's the one-stop shop where you can get your music from for your gigs. It's a searchable, organized database with thousands of edits, remixes, and different versions of your favorite tracks from many different genres. You can now save some money and get a discount using one of these two coupon codes. Use the code PJMONTHLY and get 30% off your first month off any monthly subscription. Use the coupon code PJ yearly and get 10% off your entire first year of any yearly subscription. Go to directmusicservice.com today to sign up. Before I start, I thought it was important to mention that I am an official demonstrator for Pioneer DJ USA. It's important to note that this is not a sponsored video by Pioneer DJ. I'm doing this one on my own. However, when demonstrating speakers on a video, it's actually somewhat impossible to show you guys what it sounds like. I know some folks like to take a microphone and aim it in front of the speaker, but that's not really representing what the speakers sound like if you're standing in front of them. So a lot of my opinion and how I explain them is very subjective. And we can get into the boring stuff and show you what the graph looks like, but that doesn't really explain how something would sound. So I'm basing everything what it sounds like to my ears, but I highly encourage everybody to go to their local store and actually listen to them for yourself. The point of this video is to give you a guide to figure out if this is the right speaker for you. So both speakers are active reference monitors. You can use them for monitoring your DJing when you want to plug into some speakers at home, or you can use them in the studio to actually use for production, mixing, and mastering. Now, one of the things about studio speakers is that the goal is, is to give you as neutral of a sound as possible, very colorless. And when you're trying to DJ with them, say you're a live streamer and you're listening to your... DJ set at home, a lot of times you want the opposite sound. You want a very colored, big, clubby sound. Now, I'm going to talk about this more later on, but the Bullet 8s are known to have a little bit of a kick in the low end, just this little thump that makes them good monitors for, you know, like referencing your DJ sets from home. The difference with the VM series is the built in 96 kilohertz DSP is that it allows you to control your signal output to either be as flat as possible, to be tuned to your room, your positioning of the speaker, or to give you a club like sound so that it could simulate what it sounds like when you're in a big space performing. So let's move the bullet eights to the side real quick. All right, so let's center the VM80s. So the VM series speakers come in three different sizes. The VM80 is the eight inch speaker, 30 watt, 90 watt. It has a DSP engine, like I mentioned, 96 kilohertz sample rate. The eight inch retails for 289 each. One step below that is the 6.5 inch VM70, and that retails for 229 each. And the smallest of the bunch is the five inch VM50, and that retails for 169 each. Also coming out in July of 2021, there's gonna be a white version of the VM50s. So just front layout alone, one of the big differences between the VM80 and the Bullet 8 is the fact that it has this front hexagonal shape to reduce distortion along with unwanted vibrations. I know when it comes to a room in my limited knowledge of acoustic, a lot of parallel lines aren't really good because that's how you get standing waves. It has a class D amplifier. And when we're talking about reference monitors, there's no excuse. You always have to have a class D amplifier because that makes the power really efficient. On the very front of the hexagon is a four millimeter thick aluminum front baffle. 
It's there to strengthen absorption and reduce resonance and vibration coming from the speaker. This is an aramid fiber woofer. I hope I pronounced that right. It's 30% lighter than conventional paper line cones. That means that under a signal load, it has a tight rebound. And up on the tweeter, it has a constant directive horn. If you look, there is actually this front bridge. And that's actually borrowed from the bullets because there's actually one on the lower part of the tweeter. And what that does is that helps create a more uniform listening space. But what's cool about having it over the tweeter is that it also protects it from being dented. Notice that the edge of the horn closely lines up with the edge of the woofer. The reason for that is so that your sweet spot is bigger where you're getting even signal strength from the horn and the woofer. If you're sitting down in a studio, you don't really need that big of a sweet spot. It's basically your chair. But if you're referencing your DJ sets and you're moving around and maybe you have these across the room like I do all the way and it's not exactly in the ideal triangle <laughs> configuration of having your sweet spot where your chair is, this helps keep the relation between tweeter and woofer more even from different distances from the speaker. Now, the biggest strength of the VM series is its DSP engine, its digital signal processing. And the controls are here on the back. First, we gotta mention the rear-facing Vortex Base Accelerator. That's the rear-facing port. Say you have a room that doesn't have acoustic treatment at all. None of these. One of the characteristics of low frequencies is that in a corner of a room, they tend to build up. Now, if you're using your speakers for studio use, you don't really want that build up in bass. However, if you are using it for your DJ sets, maybe you do want more bass. By having the port on the rear, it can actually fire towards the corner of the room if you have it set up that way, and it will actually attenuate the lower frequencies. Generally in a studio space, usually people are trying to avoid that, but in a DJ set, maybe you actually want that. And we got the standard inputs of the balance combo jack, which allows you to plug in XLR or TRS quarter inch, as well as an unbalanced RCA jack. If you're using an entry level controller, you can also plug into this if you split the RCA wire. And of course it has the volume control. And what's cool about the volume control is that there's actually a click to it. So if you're trying to match two speakers, you can just count how many clicks they go until you get to the point you wanna stick to. Now let's talk about the DSP. Now you can think of these two controls as bass and treble controls. Each one is a four click selector switch. It controls its frequencies by lowering them or increasing them. However, think of them as a very, very advanced EQ. If you look down below, there is a graph that actually explains what each setting is doing on the frequency band. So say you're in a room where the reflections of the highs are making the speaker seem brighter, or maybe the port is causing the speaker to sound a lot more bassy and boomy because it's firing to the corner. You can set the DSP to L1 and H1, which is marked room one. And what that does is that it actually gives a soft roll off to the bass and a soft high shelf to the highs. The graph of what it's doing is right below. This helps you in that instance of the room. Now, if you have really, really good acoustics in the room, you can set the DSP to L2 and H2, and that setting is called flat. Now, if your listening area in the room is actually canceling the top end and the low end, you can actually set it to H3 and L3, which helps lift up the bass and the highs to just be a little brighter and give the low end a little bit more bump. Now, if you are going to be using the speakers to DJ a set at home, 
or you're live streaming and you want it to have a lot more sizzle and you want it to have a lot more bump. The setting where you take the lows to L4 and H4, which is bright, gives you what's called the club setting. It makes your speaker hit at the right frequencies so that it sounds a lot bigger in your small studio space. So let's talk about the difference with the Bullet 8s. The Bullet 8s are great speakers, but when you compare them together and you have your VM80 set to flat and you have a Bullet 8 here, one of the distinct things about the Bullet 8s is that it has a very, very specific punch in the low end. Now it's a very desirable sound. However, if you're trying to reference it something and make it sound as neutral as possible, there's actually a coloration on the low end that makes it sound different from the VM80s at a flat setting. The punch has a lot to do with the fact that the porthole is in the front and the VM80 is on the rear. The rear porthole of the VM80 is why it can hit a deeper sound and hit those low end, even though it's just a regular full range speaker rather than a subwoofer. Now, while both speakers have a built-in limiter that help the speaker cones from being damaged, you'll notice that the Bullet 8s hit the limiter pretty early, especially when you're going into medium to loud volumes way before the VM80s. Now, as a reference monitor for your studio use, that's totally fine. You shouldn't even be getting up to the limiter. But if you're using it with DJ gear, you kind of want to hit those higher signal strengths. And the biggest difference between the both of them is the built-in DSP of the VM80 and the controls for it. See, on the Bullet 8s, there's only one control here, which is an attenuation control for the tweeter horn. It's minus two decibels, minus one, zero, or plus one decibels. So it's just one control for the high frequencies. And if you want more bass, you basically turn it all the way down the high frequencies and the bass level will sound louder in relation to the tweeter. On the VM 80s, the controls are for both the low and the high, but it's a very, very specific EQ curve. In fact, you'll see that the control of the lower frequencies is either being cut or being increased at 50 hertz. And it's not just one curve for each setting. So it's really made to boost a very, very specific frequency at the low end. Same goes for the controls at the upper frequencies where you're seeing a lot of changes at eight kilohertz. So that's basically the difference between the older Bullet Series speakers and the new. VM series reference monitors. The Bullet is still a great speaker, but the VM series gives you control over shaping how it sounds coming out of your speaker. All right, if you got any questions, comments, or anything to add about the VM series speakers versus the Bullet speakers, please leave them in the comment section below. We'd love to hear your thoughts, answer any questions, or learn anything new that I didn't cover in this video today. If you like this video, please smash that like button. And if it's your first time here and you found this video useful, please click that subscribe button and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you get a notification the next time I upload a video. If you're ready to pick up a pair of the VM series speakers today, be sure to use the product links below from Zounds. Zounds has one of the best payment plan programs you can find online. It's one of the easiest to qualify for. Be sure to use the product links from Zounds. Don't forget to add me on Twitch where I do my live stream mix shows on. I like to alternate the different gear that I talk about here on my YouTube so you can see it live in action. So only at my Twitch. All right, really appreciate you for watching. Thanks, take care, stay healthy. The force is with you always.